here in, in New Jersey, sea level rise is a really challenging problem. The rate of sea level rise here in New Jersey is greater than other parts of the country. Sea level rise was estimated to have risen 18 inches since the early 1900s compared to an average of about eight inches in the rest of the, the country. And the Living Shoreline project serves to be a nature-based solution to help with sea level rise and erosion in this area. We, we don't want the banks to erode away. We figure if we plant early, hopefully it will create like an interlocking system where all these roots will kind of interlock and create like a plant-based wall. So we can use nature to help us instead of walling it off by something like a seawall or a bulkhead. So in doing that, we have put in an artificial reef that will promote growth of shellfish and other animals that live on it. We're really interested in rib mussels and oysters. They're a natural hard structure, if you will, so they'll help protect the shoreline. They filter water, they create habitat. Where we are here in southern New Jersey is pretty much right in between the oceanfront, coastal side of New Jersey and the mouth of the Delaware Bay. It's very highly trafficked with boats. Our seawater system is how we deliver water to the animals, about 2,500 gallons per minute through the building. We have these major pipes that act as the main carriers of the water from the canal to these settling tanks. These settling tanks act as this intermediate between the canal and the building, so we can get any large particles that might have come from the canal out before it goes into the building. We have hundreds of millions of animals in the building at any given time. It's pretty amazing to think about the sheer volume of water that we're pumping through the building for these animals. We're basically pumping the equivalent of a couple swimming pools every five or ten minutes through this building. Aquaculture is a very hands-on science. It's a very wet, dirty, hard-working science, but the work that we're doing is very important. On a daily basis, we're acting almost as plumbers, as farmers, and that's basically all to just make sure these animals stay alive. Everything we use in the facility is returned to the Cape May Canal. We need to make sure that water goes back either untouched or cleaner than it came from the canal. Each of these larval tanks is about 1,500 gallons. So basically this is just a big tub with about 22 million oysters in it right now. Those oysters are still microscopic. So what we're doing is we're draining the entirety of this tank through a screener. These oysters are about two to two and a half weeks old. We're able to look into their gut. We're able to see that they're eating, digesting, to make sure that the cultures are healthy. What might seem like a six liter little jar of dirty water is actually nine million oysters. That could eventually be a fully sustainable, living, growing ecosystem. We're growing a lot of these oysters for shellfish restoration programs, for regrowing oyster reefs, and for regrowing habitat. Those oyster reefs will eventually be habitat for a tremendous amount of animals. This Living Shoreline project uses oyster castles. They fit together like Lego blocks. And what they help do is, is reduce the wave energy as it comes onto the beach. And the wave fizzles out before it hits the shoreline and lets sand and mud build up behind it. So it helps the marsh and the land keep pace with sea level rise. In six months, we've got a minimum of two inches of new land that's, that's formed because of the structures that were built here, because of this artificial reef that has been added block by block. And hopefully next year when we come back, we'll start to see it forming together and eventually you'll have a whole marsh platform here that will actually be a nursery for all kinds of fish and invertebrates and things that live here in the coast as well. So it's really important for just food security in general to keep marshes healthy. I feel like people should start asking themselves what they can do to better the environment. I can show my kids in the future that this is you could be doing too. They can't see it. Are they There's only one person waving, look. There was a big ship that passed and it created big waves. 
and when it hits the oyster castle it breaks the waves which is that's what they're designed for and they're working but just to think that was land how much sand dirt that will pull back 